I'm Dara O'Brien. In the news this week, Abu Hamza was found guilty of, among other offences, possession of a manual for terrorism. Among the targets listed in the manual are the Statue of Liberty and Big Ben. He really has in for anything with two hands, hasn't he? <laughs> Abu Hamza was sentenced to seven years, although with good behaviour he could be out in two. So that's seven years then. <laughs> The legal proceedings against Hamza went smoothly, although on reflection it was a mistake for the court artist to doodle a picture of Muhammad in the background. <laughs> People in the West asked, would other religions get upset if their leader was used as the punchline of a joke? Well, is the Pope a Catholic? <laughs> Ruth Kelly was forced to make concessions on her education reform to ward off a backbench revolt. One of the key elements of the education bill is the continuing sponsorship of schools by big business. But the government has been quick to reassure parents that pupils will continue to learn the three M's. That's Mac reading, Mac writing and Mac arithmetic. <laughs> also at several schools, the back of the bike sheds will now be sponsored by Marlborough. <laughs> In other news this week, a protester broke an egg on Education Secretary Ruth Kelly's head, which he then rubbed into her hair. Why did he do it? Because she's worth it. <laughs> this week, a team of scientists discovered an area of undiscovered jungle in Indonesia. The jungle is home to 40 new types of mammal. So that's 40 different types of testicle that Ant and Dec can now force celebrities to eat. <laughs> Joining me this week to work through a series of satirical games are six of the country's top comedy performers. John Oliver, David Mitchell, Andy Parsons, Frankie Ball, Hugh Dennis and Sandy Toxvig. Welcome to you all. <laughs> Let's kick off with a round we call Headliners. I show the team's a recent photo along with the initial letters of a newspaper headline. They then have to tell me what the letters stand for. Here's a picture of the tabloid's favourite hate-filled cleric, Abu Hamza. So what does H-I-F-G stand for? Is it, um, Hamza is failed gynaecologist? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's a bit unpleasant. <laughs> Hamza invented fingerless gloves. Or is it, oh. hand is frigging gone? <laughs> Because if it was the Daily Mail, it would be an exclusive and it would just be, Hamza is foreign git. <laughs> Are we close? The H does stand for Hamza. Hamza is found guilty. Oh. I'm yeah, it is. Yeah. The answer I was looking for, brilliantly imaginative, is Hamza is found guilty. He was sentenced to seven years imprisonment after being found guilty of 11 out of 15 charges, including soliciting to murder and stirring up racial hatred. What was found in his home? Uh, a oh, dough yeah. hook. Yeah. <laughs> a whisk. <laughs> he's, he's got a, a blender and a, a mixing bowl. <laughs> they found that encyclopedia, didn't they? Which yeah. uh, they oh. did him for because uh, supposedly he was encouraging people to use explosives. Now, I wouldn't take any advice from Abu Hamza <laughs> about explosives. <laughs> There's a very good reason he's got no arms and one eye. <laughs> It sounded, it classically sounded, it was called the Encyclopedia of Afghani Jihad, and it sounded like one of those part works. You know, where I go, week by week, it builds into a manual of world terrorism. <laughs> the interesting thing is that his defence team uh, have argued uh, that, in fact, this was a present from his next-door neighbours who gave it to him last Christmas, which was quite insensitive in and of itself. Uh, and <laughs> the, the proof of this is in the inscription, because it just says, Dear Abu... Uh, hope you haven't already got this. Uh, <laughs> happy Christmas, lots of love, Peter, Diane and all the kids. <laughs> he also had an A to Z, but it was interesting, because did you notice it was a mini version? So anybody living on a subsidiary road is fine. <laughs> <laughs> I was curious to find out that he had, in fact, worked as a bouncer on uh, a, a Soho nightclub. You know, I was quite surprised that he worked on the door. You'd have thought that probably he'd have been more use in the cloakroom. <laughs> 
Do you think when the police arrested him, they just went in with a giant magnet? <laughs> <laughs> just... <laughs> He's in there. Tell him. I'm sure he wouldn't do that. He'd have gone thunk like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. Yeah, no, you're quite right. Would it be tempting though for him? I'm sorry, I know we were going over the top on the whole hook thing, but uh, as he's walking along in the prison, do you think he'd be tempted just to go, as, you know, as he walks past other cells going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, thing about, the thing about going over the top with the hook thing is that we're totally justified because people who've had their arms blown off are perfectly able to get on the NHS fake arms that, you know, look like arms. But he's gone for a couple of coat hangers out of choice. <laughs> so, presumably, he thinks he looks rather swanky and will only take it as flattering that we've chosen to point out, oh, you noticed the hooks, yes. <laughs> I think they're good, the hooks and, and the eye. Yes, I'm, I'm going with that this season. <laughs> we are performing a type of Trini and Susanna uh, how not to have a hook. Uh, yeah. kind of... I was going to say we were playing into his hands, but, you know, that's... <laughs> I'm glad I didn't say that. <laughs> Do you think the judge said to him, the one thing you have got is a leg to stand on? <laughs> See, I don't want to join in too much, cos I'm Danish and we've done enough, really. Yeah, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Just having you here is I know, it's quite dangerous. It's a brave he's statement also, on behalf. He's also, his real name isn't Abu Hamza, is it? It's something camel, isn't it's, it? It's Gary Glitter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> His real yeah. name is Mustafa, Mustafa Kamel. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can see he's got a career. He's got a career in Carry On films. Yeah. <laughs> well, I want to know about Abu Hamza. I don't suppose he's actually ever been skiing, but if he did, would he bother to wait for the ski lift? <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the hook. It yeah. is all about yeah. the hook. Well, it's, it's, the bizarre yeah. thing is, it just, it's, it's actually one of the nicest things about him because you know <laughs> what he says is nastier than the yeah. hooks. Yeah. But the hook he says, go and kill people. <laughs> but, but the hook actually has kind of made him seem more charming. In what way, Dara? Well, every treat him as kind of a cuddly comedy figure to a second. It, it bondifies him, doesn't it? It turns him into a Bond villain rather than anyone we actually ha really a have to face. A poor Bond villain. And, yeah, and a poor band un Bond villain. Pleasant with the cat as well. Meow! Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> get a cat attachment of some description and then put him on it. But he's supposed to be... The tabloids are saying he's an advert for terrorism, and you think he's not a very good advert if he's blown his own eyes and hands off. <laughs> you don't see a recruitment advert for the British Army using someone who's stood in a landmine. <laughs> Join the British Army, it blew my mind. But you don't think there's a chance of this programme being repeated in seven years' time, do you? That's um, all I'm slightly worried about. <laughs> Do you think this programme will be the thing he's angriest about? <laughs> <laughs> it's the thing that gets me. It's not the imprisonment, it's not the prejudice I suffered in jail, it's the satirists. <laughs> they really I hit me it where it hurt. <laughs> I didn't think anyone had noticed my hooks. <laughs> <laughs> It was revealed after the case that Abu Hamza's marriage broke up when he was caught with a prostitute. It was all a mistake. He saw a sign saying, hand job, 50 pounds, and thought, what a bargain! <laughs> there were cheers around the country when the verdict was announced, but no bigger than among the Belmarsh players currently casting their up-and-coming production of Peter Pan. <laughs> the police raided Abu Hamza's house. They found three starting pistols, so he really was guilty of race crimes. <laughs> Sweet. That's, That's a really, really the kindest thing you've said. Really. Yeah, and it had nothing to do with the hook at all. No, That's a no. genius. <laughs> right? the, at the end of that round, oh, different play. Who the winner is? I'm going to give it to Frankie Hugh and Sandy. <laughs> right. The next round is called Between the Lines and features Sandy and Hugh. Would Thank you please make your way to the press pit, please? In this round, one of them takes on the role of a person in the news addressing the media, while the other translates what they really mean. Sandy, you are Her Majesty the Queen, reflecting on the anniversary this week of her 54th year on the throne. <laughs> My most loyal and trusted subject. Dear Chavs. <laughs> As one approaches one's 80th birthday, one can hardly believe that one has reigned for quite so long. As one approaches one's 80th birthdays, Prince Charles cannot believe that one has reigned for quite <laughs> <time. laughs> 
<laughs> I've tried to be a modern monarch in touch with all my peoples around the globe. High five, big shout to the Commonwealth Posse. <laughs> Rain, uh, I have had many great joys and triumphs. Yesterday, I won a seven horse accumulator at Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> I've also watched the nation change many times for the better. Except for the trains, they're shit. <laughs> Also been times of terrible loss. <laughs> but there have also been times of terrible loss. <laughs> loss. <laughs> loss. <laughs> I lost things. My yacht. <laughs> My private train. <laughs> Zimbabwe. <laughs> Impossible to declare a winner in that round because, frankly, the two of you are on the same team. So I'm giving the points to this team over here, John, David and Andy. Oh. Now we play a round called 360 Degrees of News. This game involves Hugh, Andy, Frankie and John. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This is a stand-up challenge. Our random news generator contains a bank of newsworthy topics. We spin the wheel, and when it stops, anyone can step forward and try to make us laugh about the subject it's landed on. If I judge the player's got a big enough laugh, he or she is safe and gets to sit down again. OK, here we go. Let's have the first topic, please. And the first topic is the environment. Who wants to come <coughs> in on that? John. I, like most people, simply cannot understand why recycling my old tin cans has not sorted everything out. <laughs> a proper explanation. At the very least, I want all my old tin cans back. <laughs> what are they doing with my cans? <laughs> we in the West are responsible for this. We consume far too much in the West, but if you want to talk about overconsumption, how about books? Millions of books are printed every year and most of them go completely unread. If we really want to save the planet, we need to return to the art of verbal storytelling. If an author has something that they want to say, they need to jump onto a horse, ride to the nearest village and start shouting. Let's see if Dan Brown has quite so much to say after that. <laughs> well done, John. Good job. Yeah. Let's spin the wheel again. The subject is the royals. Frankie. Why have the royals sent both Prince William and Prince Harry to Sandhurst? What, is there some kind of advanced gayness that doesn't get covered at public school anymore? <laughs> Do you not think life must be quite weird for Prince Harry? Getting really stoned and seeing your grand's face appearing on your money? <laughs> I, I have a theory. <laughs> a theory about Prince Philip that he can only die once he's insulted every nation on earth. <laughs> so you're the ambassador for Fiji. Finally, I can die, you spear-throwing pig humper. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Frankie. Very good. Good job. Leaving us with Hugh and Andy, one more topic is a tie-break. I'm going to spin the wheel. You both have to take a punt at this one. Let's have a go. What's the topic? Smoking. Who's in first? I don't smoke. Um, partially it's the cost. On average, smoking costs five pounds a day. Uh, double that if you're with British gas and you light up on the cooker. <laughs> <laughs> the, government, the government have promised a free vote on uh, smoking, but the MPs who want a ban are confident of victory. They're going to walk into the chamber just before the vote and shout, fag break. <laughs> After that, it's going to be illegal to smoke in your place of work. Although they're making an exception for laboratory beagles. Um, <laughs> well, no, because it's difficult to give up when you're on 300 a day. <laughs> and the patches are of no use to them. They, they won't stick to the fur. Stand in your face there. While we bring out Andy, Andy, on the topic of smoking. Yes. <laughs> Now, the government, they've made a bit of a muck of this smoking ban 
Basically, it looks like in England that they're only going to ban smoking in those pubs that serve food. So a lot of pubs in England have said, well, in which case we're going to ban food and keep <laughs> smoking. <laughs> You're now going to have to go outside for a pie. <laughs> Occasional eaters nipping outside <laughs> trying to scrounge a spare lasagna. <laughs> of course, people are desperately trying to find up different ways of giving up smoking. You know, various things like acupuncture, of course, where people stick needles into people to make people feel better. <laughs> As opposed, of course, to voodoo. <laughs> People stick needles into things that look like people, make people feel worse. <laughs> now, I was wondering, right, if you had a pair of identical twins and one of them had acupuncture, <laughs> is the other one in a bit of trouble? <laughs> well done, Andy. Andy is the winner there. Well done, sit down. OK, the next round is called, if this is the answer, what is the question on the board of six categories and related to current events for each chosen category. I read out an answer and the players have to guess what the question might be. So, Sandy, would you like to choose a category? Um, world news. OK, your category is world news. Yeah. The answer is butter, mascara and pumping equipment. Mm. What is the question? What are the top three methods to encourage pandas to mate? <laughs> <laughs> Is it what was Barbara Cartland found after her death to be made of? <laughs> what is, is, it, it? is it what is the most unusual bag of groceries that a contestant has ever emptied onto the ready, steady, cook table? <laughs> <laughs> like, is what it... are the international call signs for B, M and P? <laughs> yeah, that, this is Tango Foxtrot calling butter mascara pumpkin. <laughs> Is it the A-team could bring peace to the Middle East if they were stuck in a room with what items? <laughs> <laughs> is it, is it, what do you need a lot of if you want to drain a lake and then fill it with butter and mascara? <laughs> is it what should you take if you're going to a party at Michael Barrymore's house? <laughs> What was for lunch? I don't think you'd need mascara, Andy, <laughs> pretty boy like you. <laughs> All right, it's to do with a protest. Let's steer this towards an answer. It's protest. a Danish thing, is it? Yes, it is a Danish it's thing. You want to put that in the form of a question? Um, um, <laughs> was it not a question? Is it the is Danish the thing? Danish thing? <laughs> <laughs> is this the Danish thing? Put a mascara and pumping uh, equipment. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is it? Is it what are, what are Denmark's main exports other than bacon? Yeah, essentially, uh, the question is what Danish exports are being boycotted in the Middle East after the publication of an offensive cartoon. The growing boycott has hit leading dairy company Arla and pump manufacturers Grundfuss, but has also badly affected Danish companies exporting cosmetics, toys and clothes. Is that because they, haven't, they don't need to ban the import of alcohol and bacon? Or is it because they've forgotten? Yeah, Carlsberg, <laughs> Carlsberg for example, is relatively unscathed by a bag yeah. in the Muslim world. Uh, also, I feel terribly sorry for the small boy in the Middle East who needed one brick to finish his Lego mosque. <laughs> <laughs> um, but what? what it's, but, it's, it's, it's an export <laughs> As a Dane, I couldn't be more surprised. The words I never thought I would hear in my entire life are the words protest outside Danish embassy. Because yes. you just think, about what? More cream in the pastries! <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think you've always been, you know, Jewish for the whole Viking thing. Uh, and, uh, you know, you really haven't got the proper kicking you deserve for that whole... <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of business, but. Well, the thing is, exports of these things will be down, but surely exports of Danish flags will be up about a thousand percent. Swings and roundabouts. The Danish isn't flag it? industry is in rude health. Where, I've right. actually, I've actually. Where did all these flags come from? It's, well, it's, the, it's Beirut. You can't buy a loaf of bread, but you can get two hundred Danish flags to burn. What's going <laughs> on? Imagine that most hysterical people now have got filing cabinets filled with all flags from all nations of the world, ready soaked in paraffin, just <laughs> waiting for someone to say something unpleasant. Or oh, watch that Luxembourg. Oh, that's an offhand comment about. Islam, isn't it? How do you like this? <laughs> any more for any more? I will take all of you down, Portugal. You're here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know what's very strange is that 27 years ago when I was at university, um, I studied Muslim law. I was one of the first people to study Muslim law in this country. And I'm also Danish, and I have never been so popular with the newspapers. They go, where can we find a Dane who knows about Muslim law? Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> who ever thought it's those two things in my life would suddenly come together? That, that is the weirdest Venn diagram in the world. It is right? true. Uh, <laughs> set of all the people who are Danish, set of all the people, and then just you yeah, in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the one. Yes, yeah. in the shaded area. Yes. Just... <laughs> the Danish paper said that all they were trying to do was test extremist Muslims. You think, oh, well, no, that was a fantastic idea. <laughs> <laughs> that, that goes right they're down not, with the whole kind of whether a bull can pass the whole red <laughs> rag test as it's <laughs> waggled in front of its face, or testing how hot a fire is by shoving your hand yeah. in. Go, oh, it is hot. I have burnt man. I thought I would, but it's nice to know that it's nice to be sure. <laughs> that, I'll, I'll check again. Still hot. <laughs> yeah, still hot. In these volatile times, our again. <laughs> Except that's not quite, I mean, at the risk of telling the truth, that's not exactly what happened. And it did take five months for anybody to get upset about it. That's mainly because it has a very small circulation, this newspaper. Um, and <laughs> the actual cartoons that people got upset about were never printed in the Danish paper. So I'm a little bit defensive about it, because the ones that people actually got upset about that were shown around the Middle East are three cartoons that were never, ever printed in Denmark anywhere. Oh, it's it's tough to explain that to a mob, isn't it? Though? It is. Uh, yeah. Oh, come on, guys. It's, let's it's get our like, figures sorted out. You might as well send out the little Lurpak guy yeah. with the trombone going... <laughs> 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 The Americans must be pleased that it's not their flags being burnt in the Middle East for the first time in ages. Not that they'll be quite sure exactly whose flag is being burnt. <laughs> Commentators in America going... Oh, they're absolutely furious with somebody. We'll get back to you right after this break as to who that is. <laughs> it's, it's obviously it's weird, this flag. I mean, why do people give a damn about... And particularly the Americans give a massive shit about people burning their flag. I just don't understand, because essentially, it's not their flag. You know, you, if you burn a flag, it's a flag you've bought. It's your flag. <laughs> I burn your flag. No, you burnt your own flag. <laughs> Similarly, rising in your own country at something that happened in Denmark is also relatively like backfires. You know, when you go, I'm really angry with that, let's trash the gaff. It's our gaff. Good point. Uh, <laughs> the, it has indeed the, the knock on effect. I mean, the amount of Swiss flags that are, bur are being burnt in the, uh, the Muslim world. That's just Muslims getting it wrong. Because yeah. the Swiss flag is very similar to the yeah, Danish yeah. flag. And that's. That's got to get in your tits if you're a Swiss, right? Yeah. Uh, the Norwegian and embassy. You don't want to get the Swiss angry because yeah. they're Attack! <laughs> <laughs> What's didn't. happened to the actual cartoonist, though? Does anybody know? Oh, yeah, well, they're, they're not exactly making the... Hi, how are you? They're not on chat well, they, shows they, at the they, moment. It's going, <laughs> I'd be the guy with the pen. <laughs> this is the pen. Thank you very much. Uh, well, presumably he's going to have to hide so hard he might actually end up finding Bin Laden. <laughs> 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 oh, I should have guessed you'd be here on one of the many rings of Saturn, Mr Bin Laden. <laughs> 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 he's, probably just, he's probably just drawn a picture of a door. And he's gone to it, opened it, and run through it. <laughs> <laughs> Who was the most controversial person at the protest in London? Oh, um, Omar, the, um, Omar the Omar Rubaiyat of Omar Khayyam, or whatever his name was. Yes, yeah. This man here, who dressed as a suicide bomber. <laughs> Why are you he wearing actually... skiing gloves? That's the other thing. It just... Well, because uh, if the bomb goes, you don't want to lose his hands like Abba Hamza. <laughs> It just be two perfectly preserved hands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, he actually he caught the train down from Bedford to London. I reckon he had the carriage to himself. <laughs> Actually, it's, it's not a bad way to stop people sitting with you, is it? <laughs> it's also intriguing as to what I always think it's about. He's got camouflage trousers on, hasn't he, there? So what's he thinking? That he's going to be walking along, no one will be able to see his legs. <laughs> <laughs> so people will be going, oh, what a shame, that disabled person can yeah. fly! <laughs> <laughs> Seems to be floating. <laughs> <laughs> The cultural editor of the newspaper that first printed the offending cartoon argued that the images highlighted the issue of religious integration in much the way as Harold Shipman highlighted the issue of doctor-patient ratios. <laughs> I think the points in that round go to John, David and Andy. Yay. Now we come to our final quickfire round called Scenes We'd Like to See. This is for everyone, so if you can make it over to the performance area. I call it ideas for scenarios we'd love to see, and the performers come in with their suggestions. OK, here we go. The first subject is... Unlikely things for a Winter Olympics commentator to say. 
points off the Danish team for exploding. <laughs> and he's fallen over! I love it when they do that! That's the <laughs> best bit! <laughs> <laughs> and now the four words that no ice dancer ever wants to hear release the polar bear. <laughs> <laughs> of course, bribery no longer exists in the Olympic movement. Welcome to the Winter Games here in Basingstoke. <laughs> <laughs> the upturned bobsleigh providing a fitting coffin. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever stared at snow so long it turns to blood? <laughs> <laughs> My goodness, the band must just be fed up with playing the British national anthem. <laughs> OK, the next topic is... What you don't want to hear in an NHS hospital. Can you go for a shit so the surgeon can get his car keys back? <laughs> There's been the most hilarious misunderstanding during your vasectomy. <laughs> MRSA, yeah, I think they tried to give me a credit card. <laughs> the face transplant's gone well. I think you look better as a black man. <laughs> I've come to take your blood sample. <laughs> Now, you're sure you had legs when you came in? <laughs> the next topic is... Commercials that never made it to air. Fed up with an untidy toolbox, buy the Abu Hamza multi-tool. <laughs> Start the day with a protein boost with Kellogg's pork flakes. <laughs> Come home to a real fire. Visit the Danish Embassy. <laughs> <laughs> My bank became a wine bar. To be honest, I quite like it. <laughs> <laughs> the Indonesian children who made these trainers know that if they miss a single stitch, their family will be beaten with sticks. That's <laughs> how we can guarantee you quality. <laughs> Use Vanish, like me, Saul Campbell. Ah. <laughs> Accident at work? Look where you're going, you dozy bastard. <laughs> ah. Run out of loo roll? Why not use this fluffy dog? <laughs> ah. Dry skin, itchy, flaking scalp. You disgust me. <laughs> I think the winner of that round was Frankie! <laughs> Everyone sit down. <laughs> That's the end of the show. This week's winners are John Oliver, David Mitchell and Andy Parsons. <laughs> Commiserations to Frankie Moore, Hugh Dennis and Sandy Toxby. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Good night. Well, dodgy commercials that actually did get to air are heading your way over on BBC One in about five minutes. We've got exclusive interviews with Pink Floyd after Newsnight here on Two. The Dark Side of the Moon is the classic album at 11.35. And on BBC Three at 11, Douglas Henshaw stars in the award-winning Lawless Heart. Their British film season continues in half an hour.